Riley is on the attendees list. Just one moment, please. Uh, we are videotaping tonight's meeting. Uh, so I would like to call the meeting to order and welcome all of our stakeholders and neighbors. And I am Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council President. Uh, we've got 17 board members that are elected by the stakeholders and we are all unpaid volunteers. LA City Charter Section 900, purpose of neighborhood councils to promote more citizen participation in government and make government more responsive to local needs. A citywide system of neighborhood councils and a department of neighborhood empowerment is created. Neighborhood councils shall include representatives from the many diverse interests in communities and shall have an advisory role, role on issues of concern to the neighborhood. We are a department within the city of Los Angeles. We are required to follow city and state laws. The Brown Act does not allow us discussion on anything that is not on tonight's agenda. There are time limits on agenda items for the meeting. Uh, so that will end around 9.30 tonight. Time uh, allocations are approximate and may be shortened or lengthened at the discretion of the president, that be me. Uh, the timekeeper tonight is James Brown. Uh, this is the first webinar meeting Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council has ever had. Uh, it could be a little rough around the edges tonight, but we're doing the best we can with little uh, training. So I apologize in advance if we have a few missteps. Uh, number two on the agenda, Pledge of Allegiance. Behind me, you'll see a flag. If we uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance led by James Brown. James, are you still there? I am still here, Linda. And um, as is our custom, I would like to uh, ask all of us to stand to honor our country and our first responders as well. And we will, we will recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, begin. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America. and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, Thank you, James. Uh, number three, roll call. Quorum is nine. Uh, Secretary, would you do roll call for us, please? Yes, Carla Batista. Here. James Brown. Here. Ruth Doxy. Here. Kristen Fujitaki. Here. Linda Gravani. Here. Sandra Joseph. Here. Gary Kay. Here. Danica Middleton, I'm here. Alan Nelson. Here. Carol Newman. Here. Mary Penniman. Jeremy. Is how do you correctly say your last name, Jeremy? Pisanic. Just that's Pisanic. Jeremy Pisanic. Yeah. Linda Pruitt. Yeah. Tom Riley. Yeah. Linda Schwering. Here. Emma Scott. Jim Stein. Here. We have 15 present. Quorum is met at nine. And I'm sorry, I missed who is missing. It's uh, Mary, Alice, and em, Mary and Emma. And Emma, thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome. Uh, number four, board members that are eligible to vote. All board members are. Um, the youth rep, uh, Emma, completed ethics training. So if she were present today, she would be eligible to vote on all non-financial items. Uh, number five, adoption uh, for the agenda for May 6, 2020. I do have a correction in number 14 under land use. I have discussion and possible discussion. The second word <laughs> discussion should be uh, action. So it should read discussion and possible action. So we need to make that correction, please. Okay. I have a request. Could the agenda in the future have page numbers, please? <sighs> Okay. That was page three. Can I make a motion to adopt the agenda as amended? Have you made the motion? Who, who made the motion, please? 
Ruth, Ruth. Ruth is making the motion. I second. Okay, Ruth made the motion to accept. James Brown seconded. Any further discussion? Anyone abstaining? Anyone opposed? Motion will carry on this. Thank you very much. Okay, number six, discussion of possible action for the approval of the minutes for February 5, 2020. I have some corrections. Uh, okay, the first one is on um, item number five. It says uh, zero or absent, but two people are listed. So that should be changed to zero two to absent because Bautista and Gravani are, were absent. And number um, five and six is an early correction. It's a comment. It has Elmas Scott as being in, ineligible to vote for approving the agenda in the minutes. And I don't know if that's because she hadn't finished the ethics training. That is correct. She didn't. Uh, correct. She was not right. able to vote on anything. Okay, and hang on. Can you go back? Can you go back to the one before that? Item, item number, number five. five. Right. It says on the line where it says yes, no, ineligible, absent, it says one is absent, but there's two names listed. Got oh, okay, gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, the next thing is item eleven. It says Galentine's Day. It's, I think it's supposed to be Valentine's Day. No, Galentine's no, Day is a new holiday. Valentine's Day. It is supposed to be Galentine's Day. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a new <laughs> holiday. Yes, it is. You guys got to Okay, let's see. And that's it for February. Can I make a comment? It's Lydia. Yes. Yeah, so Ruth, it was an event that the department put on and they did call it Galentine's with a G. That's Thank why. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Seriously? Seriously. Who did that? The Department of Labor and Empowerment? Yes. Not too smart, Don. Uh, all right. So, so I'm going to Was there a motion made? No. Should I make another motion? I'll make a motion to approve the February minutes of 2020 uh, as amended. Second. <clears throat> so Ruth Hossi made the motion, James Brown seconded. Any further discussion? Something happened to your audio, Linda. It sounds really weird now. That's it. Uh, I'm here too. I'll go back to this. Is that uh, better? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. Much better. All right. Okay. Uh, any further uh, discussion on this? No. Okay. Anyone opposed? Um, was this the meeting that I was missing at? Yes. yes, I need yes. to abstain. So uh, Gra Gravani abstains because I was not at that meeting. Okay, thank you. Anyone opposed? Motion what? carries. Uh, wait, hang on. Um, Linda, right. Linda, you're abstaining from agenda item number seven. I'm no. abstaining from the February um, five minutes. No, it was March she was missing. It was, from. it was March. We're on number six. We're on number six, yes. Oh, sorry. Right, number six was, six was February. And we haven't voted yet. Correct. And Gravani, you're abstaining from that because you were not at February's meeting. That's what Correct. she said. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, so you want to give us the total? Okay, so then uh, 14. 14 uh, yes, A's and one of 
abstaining and two absent. Thank you. You're welcome. I just want to let everybody know we got a message from Cynthia Hernandez, who is won't going, who is not going to be at the meeting the whole time, but wanted to make sure to connect with LBNC. Okay, thank you. Uh, number seven, discussion of possible action for the approval of minutes for March 4. Um, item number nine uh, needs to be corrected uh, to show a yes vote should be six. It currently shows 12. There was a tie vote between the two um, appointees uh, or the folks that wanted to be appointed. So it should have been six and six. And in that box, it shows 12. Um, also, um, Jeremy's last name ends with a C like Charlie. So everywhere his name is written on the agenda needs to be corrected to Pisanic. Okay. And then on item number 11, the fourth line from the bottom. Hang on, hang on we... Okay, go ahead, item 11. Fourth line from the bottom should read neighborhood, not neighboring. Gotcha. Okay. And then at that meeting, uh, Mary Penniman, Linda Pruitt, and Emma Scott were absent, so they are ineligible. No, no, Batista, she left. No, she's here. No, 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 she left on item 11, if that's what you're talking about still. Gotcha. We got a couple of corrections too. Okay. 7D, what's page three? 7D, fourth line down. It has council M woman. Remove the M. So it just says council woman. On line three? Four. It's the first word, councilwoman. It says council M, like Mary, woman. Oh, that's weird. Mine says, okay. Uh, I'm not quite sure what copy you're looking at. Okay. You're, you're talking about where it says the councilwoman and the community are united in opposition? Right. I printed it out from what Linda Gravani sent us for the agenda, with the agenda. That's where it, I'm look, what I'm looking okay. at. Okay. I'll make sure. All right. And then the next one is 7M, like Mary. Uh, the second line, it says Stephanie Milkian at asm.ca.gov absent. You're talking about, okay, go ahead. No, I'm looking. Page four, bottom of the page. Okay. Um, okay, go ahead. Well, she was there. She gave a report and it says on that second line that she was absent. Okay. Absent needs to be removed. Okay. Let's see, the next one is uh, um, page five, top of the page, the second line. Uh, it says, uh, rather it is far is from folks that should be were, not we're nearly already. So take out the apostrophe in we're to make it were. Okay. And the number 23 might have been addressed already. Under the, where it says the voting outcome, absent was, says four. So I think she already said to add Bautista. It has Penamon, Pruitt, Scott, and you need to, need to add Bautista. Okay. That's it. The ones I'm going to say, there's a few minor ones, but forget it. <clears throat> Can I interrupt as Lydia? Yes. Linda Gravani, you had mentioned one that I got confused on. So can you go back and mention it? I didn't want to interrupt because Ruth was already started talking, but it was the last thing you mentioned. 
It had something to do with uh, Bautista in the box. I that was item 11. Item 11. I didn't say anything about Bautista. That was uh, Danica that said that she was not there. Okay. In which item are you talking about, Danica? In item 11. Item 11. But it's there. It's there. Oh, okay. Okay. So there wasn't a mistake on that. No. no. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure I catch them all. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we send out the minutes ahead of time so that everybody can look them over uh, and that we could get a second version or a third version or a fourth version. Our time is too valuable to be taking it uh, at our meeting time to make these corrections. So when they are sent out by the secretary, if you can take a look at them right away and send them back so that when, when we get ready for the meeting, we have a good copy uh, and then we can just go and, and uh, approve them. Uh, unless there's some glaring errors. Okay, do we have a motion? Ruth, was that your motion? No, I didn't make a motion. Somebody needs, Somebody to, needs to make a motion. One. I move to approve the minutes as corrected. I second. Okay, Carol Newman made the motion. Uh, Jeremy uh, seconded. Any further discussion? Anyone opposed? Motion carries, thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, we're on to number eight, announcements and reports. And if you are here from uh, the elected officials, please identify yourselves, you're under attain attendees. But we're gonna start with um, the captain and I see that you, we need to unmute you here. Hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Captain Espinosa. Yes. Hi. Hi. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Uh, hi. Hey. Hi. Glad to see uh, the neighborhood councils are, are up and running now. Um, we've been doing a few of these with our volunteers. Our, our, uh, some of us have started our CPEBs. Or ours is a, a, a work in, in progress. Um, I just wanted to give you a couple of updates of kind of what's been going on on our side um, with some of the COVID stuff. Uh, of our issues that we're dealing with crime-wise and, and, and some crime in, in your area. Um, first of all, as far as COVID for West Valley Station, uh, we've only had uh, two employees at the station out of 250 sworn and about 25 civilian. Um, so that's, that's good considering the environment uh, that we work in and that we're constantly in every day. So one is still out, one is back. Um, but he's, uh, the one is out is, is due back uh, tomorrow, I believe. So that's good. So nobody else has gotten it. We've been very really fortunate. I believe as a department, we're right under 100 out of 10,000. Um, that's really good. You know, we're looking at, uh, at, at 1%. Um, you should be seeing our officers out there wearing masks in public on calls and dealing with uh, the arrestees. Um, in their cars at West Valley, I've kind of given them discretion. It's very difficult. They're, you're two and a half feet away from your partner 12, 10, 12 hours a day. So if your partner gets it, most likely, you know, you're there, you're, you're with them. So, so we, we expect that. Um, so doing really well there. A couple things. Um, the closest, I wouldn't call it a homeless shelter, but uh, it is a... Uh, it is a homeless location for at-risk homeless, uh, at-risk being elderly or uh, high medical risk uh, homeless people over at the Airtel Plaza. Um, so I wanna say they have 80 to 90 people there right now um, housed at the Airtel Plaza. Uh, so we are just monitoring that. Um, they're in there, I, I, I think they're, we're going on our second- I just week. lost audio. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, we're keeping track of it. It hasn't been much of an issue. I know there was one radio call there generated the other day with someone uh, saying he, the, the management saying they thought he was destroying his room and not and refusing to open the door and leave. Um, we got there and he cooperated. Um, so there's that. That's probably the closest thing we have to your basic car area um, regarding any issues. Um, like that, so that's an ongoing issue. I believe the capacity capacity at that hotel is around uh, 270 or so. 
um, but they are not at uh, to, to full capacity. Um, so I, I do understand and I appreciate that uh, people need to be housed and, and shielded from this so it doesn't spread. Uh, <clears throat> our concern is that, uh, that we're able to find them permanent housing, obviously. We don't want them back in the community or overlapping into your area causing other issues. Our goal is always to, uh, to get them housing. Uh, as you know, as far as it goes, is the social distance, distancing and the stay-at-home orders um, we're not enforcing, we are advising. So uh, the only thing we are enforcing is that businesses, um, we've given them a couple warnings after a, a couple warnings, then we're going in, we're basically doing, working with the city attorney for an application for a complaint. So nobody's getting arrested, we're doing an application for a complaint and the city is going at them on the, on the backside. So I think there's only like one or two businesses in West Valley that, that have done, that we've had that issue with. And I believe they're both smoke shops. Um, that kind of refuse to, to close and, and, and stop business. And we always have issues with our medical marijuana, uh, or our, excuse me, our marijuana, illegal marijuana facilities. Um, so there's that. Uh, also, uh, as far as crime in your area, year to date, uh, this, your basic car is, is doing great, 10A17. You're down 14.1% in crime. The biggest Achilles heel for, for like the Lake Balboa area and that general vicinity are the car break-ins, the burglary from motor vehicles. Uh, last year, you had about 66 at, at this time through May 2nd. This year, you have 83. Um, citywide, the problem are people still in cars in general. Um, you're looking good in, in, in that area, but uh, we are having issues with that. And and also, the burglary from motor vehicles is just, just not as bad. Um, right now, they're, they're, they have a no bail, a zero bail. So basically, almost all property crimes, some violent. Um, nobody's really being held. Um, so as I said, uh, West Valley right now is having problems with stolen cars, as is the city, except we arrest, say we arrest them now, by the time we take them to get processed and booked and everything else, by the time we get back to the station to start the reports, they're probably being released at that point um, due to some of the COVID issues in, in the jail and, and things, you know, the, the capacity of the courts. So hopefully that, that problem is, is rectified and, and fixed, but I just wanted to give you a, a quick update of what's been going on at West Valley Station. Any um, questions? I know you have a lot, on, a lot to talk about because you've been offline for so long, so I don't want to take, take too much time, but is there any questions I can answer of you from the police side or something maybe I missed that you might be interested in? Captain, I have one, and that is, uh, what's the position now on getting uh, BCP volunteers back in? Yeah, we're, we're working on that, James. Um, obviously, we want to make sure we're doing it uh, the safe and appropriate way uh, for everybody in, involved. Um, so as of last week, we were looking at to see who would, first of all, want to come back in, in the environment, um, making sure who would want to come back in and then making sure that we have the appropriate protective equipment um, that would be needed uh, to do the volunteers, whether, as you know, we have volunteers at the station that help us with phones and help us with several different types of things. And we also have our community patrol that actually go out in the, in the, marked, uh, the marked BMWs and help us out. So we really miss them. Um, so the department is in the process of working out those guidelines as far as safety, who to bring in, and you know, the, the, uh, the comfort level of, of that person to come back in. And the same thing goes for our cadets and our youth programs. We're talking about that August, I believe it's August 18th that LA Unified has scheduled for schools to go back in session in a different type of form than one we've traditionally known. Um, so we're probably gonna follow their lead as far as timelines. And we have, we're still working out our processes to how do we bring these cadets and kids back into our station. Uh, to make sure it's safe. And, and as I've been telling our officers and everyone else, the more we abide by the stay at home and, and, and everything else, the, the sooner we, we can get out of this. Uh, and I do realize we people have to have, live, have to have lives, have to make money, have to do everything else. So uh, if, if they give us guidelines, let's try to abide by those. Even if they say, hey, we'll open up restaurants, you know, to take your mask, do whatever the rules are gonna be when we move in that direction. So we make sure we don't go back to this again. So I hope that answers part of your question, James, and it's, it's work in progress. Got it, thank you, Cap. 
I have a question, sir. This is Jim Stein. Hi, Jim. Yes. Uh, I noticed uh, um, you've got these uh, characters uh, doing uh, sp spinning their cars, whatever, in the middle of the intersection. There's a real, there's a, a evidence of uh, some people having done it at uh, Van Owen and Woodley. Um, I, I, there's always people doing this kind of thing, but I seen the uh on the news where they're you know crowds are all around them uh, really close uh, there's just an accident uh, serious injury waiting to happen people some of them even jumping on the car taking a ride it's something out of a, it's it's like a it's like a movie or something um then they take off of course before anybody can get out there but that's my that's my observation. Yeah, so Jim, we are uh, aware of basically that some of the streets have been more open than usual, uh, especially at night. So kids, not kids, people are using them as raceways for race to do all sorts of different things. So we're aware of that. I put it out to my patrol officers to try to do some extra traffic enforcement when they see that. Uh, additionally, our Valley Traffic Division who oversees all the traffic um, if it's a concern for you, uh, our Valley Traffic Captain, Captain Andy Nyman, has volunteered to try to attend some of your meetings via Zoom. So if you'd like him at your next one to discuss the traffic issues in particular, I know schools are out, sometimes schools are a big issue with traffic, but this particular, this issue that you're mentioning, Jim, is, is, is growing or it has grown. Um, hopefully when, this, when the COVID stuff goes away, that some of those issues uh, will go away, but I would put it out there to you for if, if you'd like it to have, to have him attend or somebody from Valley Traffic to address some of the, some of the traffic issues. I do know now going home, my, uh, my drive has taken a little bit longer and I'm seeing a little, like it seems almost every day I'm seeing a few more cars on the street. Um, uh -huh. People I think are starting to want to live their lives, uh, whether you agree or not. Um, so uh, I, I'll put it out there to, for you guys to debate later on or if you'd like somebody from Valley Traffic to address some of that shit. Right, thank you. Anyone else? Thank you very much. We appreciate your participation this evening, Captain. Thank you. You all have a good meeting and a, and a good night. And I'd invite you to in June when uh, uh, Jim and I coordinate our CPAB Zoom meeting and our live book, our Facebook live streaming of, of some emergency preparedness. Remember, we're back to fire season. Um, so keep, keep that in mind. Uh, and also, this is always earthquake country. It seems like we've been having more and more little mini earthquakes. Um, so always, always be prepared um, because this is interesting times. Don't forget about the killer hornets. And, and, and I'll, leave, <laughs> I'll leave at that, okay? Have a, have a good evening and good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Captain. Uh, is Jonah on? Jonah is supposed to be calling in, but I don't know where Jonah's phone number is. Can you do a display nine? Well, it's, it's star nine. Well, I'm, we're just gonna move on then, I'm sorry. Uh, next would be Caroline. Hi, Linda. Hi. <laughs> Caroline from Mayor Garcetti's office. Yes, good evening, everyone. I'm so glad that we're back in action with the Neighborhood Council meetings. It's so, it's so wonderful to be here with you all. Um, well, for those of you who don't know, Caroline Lynchbar, East Valley Area Representative for the Mayor. As you can imagine, my life has been turned upside down in the past month and a half, but I am here to continue to um, assist in any way possible. I don't know why I'm not on... Um, there we go. Um, assist in any way possible. I am uh, sending out nightly updates of what happens in the day every oh single day. Oh my God, Carolyn, you look like a man. What? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I send out daily updates every single night. If you have not, um, if you want to be, if you want to be included in that, let me know. As we can see, everything changes every minute and every hour. So I try to send out those updates. Audio's gone. 
something drastic happen today as we know we are gonna be <laughs> the mayor the city and county have announced that we are going to be uh, opening up some non-essential businesses starting this friday to do curbside those businesses are to include florists toy stores music stores bookstores um to do curbside only on friday uh, starting friday as well as delivery um, so we're filtering questions as like, as in why can my business open? We're just taking the guidance of the LA County Public Health. They just today told us that we want to proceed with stage two and that's what we're going to be doing. We want to make sure we're on the same um, uh, a page as LA County. So if there's anything else, I can, re I can answer any questions that you may have offline, email or in the time allotted here. Thank, Thank you. you. Time's up. Time's up. Okay. Well, it'll be offline then. Thanks, Caroline. Appreciate it. And I see all your emails and messages. I know you're working overtime. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry, Linda. I think there was a question for, from a public comment regarding Caroline. Is she still here? She's here. Oh, no, she left. Okay. No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm okay. I'm sorry. Uh, Caroline, uh, somebody asked a direct question for a mayor's representative. Can you please provide clarity about what phase mobile groomers are in? A uh, big question rolling through the community. Thanks for any clarification that you can provide as the groomers themselves are getting conflicting information. Oh. So groomers, as it stands, are not allowed to be open or pick training every single day. There's no way we can give a specific date on when they're going to be opening. Uh, this literally changes by the minute. So as soon as the health determines that it's um, uh, safe enough for the, for us to open them, then we will know. We have no specific timeline on what would be the ne when the next stage will be available. Thank you. Thank you. I think you're good to go now, Caroline. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Cynthia, you're next. I'll unmute you. Hi, everyone. It's nice to see everyone via Zoom. Uh, it's nice to connect to my like Balboa people. Um, so I'm just checking in with everyone. Um, for those who I haven't met just yet, I work with the city attorney's office. Right now, we actually have been tasked with a very interesting position with the neighborhood prosecuting program. We actually have been handling all the non-essential businesses that are remaining open. So um, Mike Fuhrer has been reporting with the latest. We only have a couple of locations who have been pushed to towards shutdown if not legal lawsuit is happening, which is turning off the power and the electricity through the WP. So we're getting very creative in the measures with the city attorney's office right now. It kind of has been a pause on um, everything just because we have shifted our focus onto these things, but I did want to connect to make sure you guys do have a liaison in between public safety issues. As the captain has reported, we have seen a lower rates in crime right now. We just have been seeing other kind of things appearing throughout the city, but I'm just here to connect with you guys and you guys have any questions. I always leave my email for you guys. If anything, you guys could always connect with me in regards to all these shifts. It is very interesting times and as Caroline mentioned, we are just seeing um, what non-essential businesses can open, cannot open, and these, the language varies every single day, and we hear like every third day the language switches. Um, but if you guys have any questions, I'll open it up for that, but I just wanted to say hi to everyone and connect with everyone. Hi, Cynthia. Any questions for Cynthia? Are there any maybe on uh, Q&A, Kristen? I, I can't. Uh... You guys hear that? I hope you don't. No, thank you. Nothing for Cynthia. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Tara from LAUSD. And Jeremy, could you uh, screen share the uh, handout for Tara, LAUSD? Linda Gravani, Emma Scott has now arrived to our meeting. Uh, please note the time. Danica, would you note the time? Oh, sure, 7.42. Thank you. Is now a good time for me to begin? 
Tara, you're on. Okay, um, Jeremy, if you could just go to the first slide, that would be um, much appreciated. So my name is Tara Vajani and I work for school board member Scott Schmerlson. Um, we represent about 110 schools in the San Fernando Valley. Um, as you can imagine, a lot has happened in the district since um, schools closed on March 16th. Um, on the 18th of March, we opened 63 grab and go um, food centers across the city. 17 locations um, are located in the San Fernando Valley. And um, I just wanna give a shout out to Kristen who I think updates your social media. She's actually been posting um, almost daily like what foods folks can actually pick up when they go um, to these grab and go centers, which I think is really helpful for people that are interested in this resource. The closest one to Lake Balboa is at Mulholland Middle School and it's open daily from 8 to 11 a.m. You can get breakfast and lunch, no ID required. I, I really encourage you all to tell more people about this resource because we've served over 15 million meals um, since opening on March 18th, and I feel like there are more people we can reach. And the nice part is that um, through community partnerships, we've been able to distribute non-food items like diapers, shampoos, um, even Seize Candy and the Girl Scouts have donated um, boxes and boxes of chocolates, um, which just brighten people's days. Um, so if you could go to the next, yeah, so that'll, that shows you a map of where these are geographically located. And then if you go to the third slide, um, we've also opened up a mental health hotline for students and families. Um, you know, they're not connecting with their teachers on a daily basis, um, especially at the elementary grades. And so this is a hotline that parents can um, call or students can call if they um, are feeling down or don't know how to access resources because their normal line of mental health service isn't operating during COVID. Um, and then if you go to the next slide, we, um, we're trying to find a balance between being all COVID all the time and also, you know, continuing education on the various topics that we teach in our schools. And so um, I'm excited to share that we're actually collaborating with the Secretary of State, Alex Padilla, for um, an event this upcoming Tuesday at 2 p.m. Um, that's really targeted at parents and students watching together to learn more about um, how young people can pre-register to vote, um, the importance of staying engaged, and also information about the 2020 census. Um, and we're excited because one of our awesome LUSD seniors is gonna be um, a featured speaker as well. So I really encourage you to tune in. And then if you could go to the next slide, um, I send weekly updates. And so if you'd like to be added to my update list, um, feel free to message me on the chat or shoot me an email. Um, it's my first name, dot last name at LUSD.net. Um, but here you'll see that we've been uh, hosting a series of parent workshops. And um, the last one is um, on the five lang love languages of your child. So you know, these workshops have really been targeted at um, giving parents more resources to I talk to their children. So busy. And um, so we're hosting our final one next Thursday at 3 p.m. in English and at 4.30 p.m. in Spanish. And so the, just the last um, right. slide is the Spanish version Time's of that. Up. So please share right. people that you know. Time. Oh. That's what that was. Time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a representative from Adrian Nazarian's office, Stephanie. Uh, let me just uh, get you unmuted. If we can uh, uh, stop sharing the screen for. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. Well, um, thank you so much for having me. It, you know, reiterating what Caroline said earlier, it's it's great to feel some type of normalcy during this difficult time. A lot of folks are contacting our office for EDD issues, DMV issues, and franchise tax board issues. Please know that we serve as a liaison to these state departments. We are handling about a thousand cases per week. Um, for EDD, and we're a staff of about three uh, with one director. Um, in, in honor of Armenian Genocide's uh, uh, 105th commemoration, we did an educational seminar with LAUSD board member. Uh, Hello, we have no video and no response. I cannot understand anyone. This is Linda S. Okay. Just one second. Linda Schwering. Can I go on? Thank you. Sorry about that. That's okay. So um, 
in honor of Armenian Genocide 105th commemoration, we did an educational seminar with LUSD board member uh, Schmerlston's office uh, a couple weeks ago. On that same note, we have a scholarship contest for high school students across the state. So please, you know, you know any high school students, please apply. Last week, we did our first virtual town hall with few technical difficulties with <laughs> SBA as well as Greater San Fernando Valley Chamber with about 250 participants. We answered very real questions. Um, you know, our office, you know, serves as a liaison or here for you. Um, I haven't been sending any updates, but I can if, you know, that's something that you'd like to see. It's just uh, information changes da daily, if not uh, more than once a day. <laughs> um, we return to session this Monday and are working on some of our more urgent bills, uh, such as uh, the diabetes bill to cap copay. Um, and uh, that's it. If anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to me at stephanie.machilian at asm.ca.gov, um, or you can call our office line. Um, again, happy to help the community. Uh, we've been doing a couple of volunteer activities as well. So thank you for having me. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so thank very you. much, Stephanie. Uh, next, we have our representative from Tony Cardenas's office. I'll Osvaldo, I think I've got, there you are. Yes, hey. everybody. A little confused. Oh, yeah, there he is. Yes, yeah, uh, excuse the hat. Uh, I haven't had, uh, you know, a good grooming in a while. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I just want to provide some updates from the congressman. Um, you know, as many of you know, Congress has passed a handful of stimulus uh, packages to address COVID. Uh, the latest uh, package that did pass included a bill that the congressman introduced to expand Medicaid coverage of COVID testing and treatment to the uninsured. Uh, so that was a bill that he introduced and that uh, legislators adopted into the uh, latest uh, stimulus package. Uh, as of right now, Congress is currently working on another stimulus package. Uh, discussions are, are being done all week uh, and they're looking to finalize something, hopefully by the end of this week. Um, the previous stimulus packages uh, included two types of uh, loans for businesses, uh, IDLE and uh, PPP loans. Uh, they also included assistance, um, monetary assistance for individuals um, in the form of the stimulus checks uh, that sent out through the IRS. Uh, to speak a little about the uh, IDLE and the PPP loans for businesses, um, there was a little bit of, you know, confusion and, you know, the rollout for these loans was not perfect. Um, businesses needed to apply for the IDLE loan with the SBA and they needed to apply for the uh, PPP with their own banks. So there was a bit of confusion there. Um, our office, these past couple weeks, our district office has been working uh, with the SBA and banks uh, on behalf of business owners. So small businesses have been uh, reaching out to our office. Um, so we had a, a large you know, caseload uh, these past couple weeks and we're starting to get responses from the banks and approvals of PPP loans. Uh, so that's a, a good sign. A lot of PPP loans are starting to be approved. Um, so if, uh, if you know any stakeholders know any small business that is having issues communicating with the SBA or their bank, please uh, reach out to me. My email is uh, there where my name should be on the uh, on the screen. I put my name right, uh, my email right there. Osvaldo.RamirezML.House.Gov. Please reach out to me. Um, in instant, in uh, if anyone has concerns with IRS stimulus checks. Um, we do have IRS liaisons that are working with us, so we can potentially answer any questions you might have uh, regarding that um, if, if I'm not able to answer them right now. So um, that's, that's those are the updates for, for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Time. Oh, Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Of course. And last but not least, how about Betty Wangayama? Hello, everyone. It's good to see everybody. Um, hi, Betty. hi, Betty. I just want to introduce my little granddaughter, Makeda. Oh, hi. Hello. <laughs> okay, now you can go back. <laughs> okay, I just have a few announcements. You know, we're all going through um, a lot of challenges now during these uncertain times, and I just want you all to know that the department, and as well as myself, we're here for you if you need anything. Um, regardless if it's personal or just for the NC business, but I'm here for you. Feel free to contact me via email or call my work cell phone, which is on the agenda, and I'll be more than happy to assist you. Um, just a reminder, bylaws, I see that it is on your agenda. 
they're due to the department by June 1st. The NC elections will continue um, with their current date, set dates um, for next year, 2021, mm -hmm. for the neighbor council's elections. Um, ethics, there are a few of you uh, who have, who will be having expire um, ethics training end of March, excuse me, end of May. I encourage you to take that as soon as possible. Uh, just for your information, we will have a ethics uh, virtual training in May. So as soon as I get that information, the date I will email all of you with that information. And there's also a handful of you with um, coming up expiration date for the funding on June 30th. That needs to be updated as well. Uh, phase three with the EVG um, will be a, a training for the executive committee. And that's going to be coming shortly, probably in the next week or two. And uh, for those who did not attend the Roberts Rules uh, Made Simple or the EVG um, virtual meetings uh, protocol, we do have it on our websites. Just go on to our website, which is empowerla.org. And once you're in the website, just click on the banner that says EVG portal. And that will take you to all our template, templates and our, our trainings and any uh, questions you may have regarding the Zoom. Um, these are challenging times for all of us, but we're all doing this together and everything will go well. So, so far, so good. Thank you, Linda, and, and all of you for your leadership. I really appreciate you all. Thank, Thank you. you Betty. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, Betty. Thank you. Uh, next is going to be uh, item number nine, public comment. If you wish to uh, speak before the board, please raise your hand or I believe it's uh, asterisk nine uh, on your phone uh, to let us know that you have uh, a question. And it's quite interesting. We have 54 participants on our call. Does anyone see any hands raised? No. Well, Tom Riley. <laughs> we're talking about we are talking about the stakeholders. Public <laughs> I see Cindy Clay Corner. Yeah, there's two people with raised hands. Hmm. Huh. Cindy Clay Corner. Aaron. And Aaron Devandry. Aaron and Cynthia. Aaron Devandry. Hi, everybody. Hi, Aaron. I just want to say hello. Um, I'm glad to see the meeting going on and um, I can actually uh, be a part of it this time. So it's, it's, it's really cool. So it's good to see you all. I like Jim's beard. And um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, keep going. I have to do something during this time off. <laughs> I'm growing mine out too. Uh, so it's good stuff. Anyway, um, good to see you all. Thanks again for being honestly probably I, my, my favorite neighbor council to work with. I love you guys. So uh, keep up the good work and uh, we'll see you again. Maybe Just in know we're recording this. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I have no problem saying that. Thank you. Yeah, you're all wonderful. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next thank you. we have uh, Cindy. Before you do that, uh, Linda? No, just one second. I got Cindy now. I'm sorry. Cindy Claycorn. Corn, thank you very much. It's great to see you. You guys are doing great. You're a great model of, of getting this uh, Zoom uh, method of meeting um, going. So thank you very much. I just wanted to, um, you know, congratulate you and uh, see that you're all doing well. You look great. Um, I also wanted to let you know that the Congress of Neighborhoods is um, canceled for this Uh-oh. But we're um, staying together as a committee, and we welcome your involvement in any way you wish to be. Um, uh, Cindy, sorry, sorry, you cut out. So is it canceled for this year? It's canceled for this year, but we're going to continue meeting and uh, perhaps do some other things to network in the, in the interim. And I also wanted to let you know about Plan Check NC's meeting this Saturday. On uh oh, she cut out again. Well, I guess there's a plan check meeting on Saturday. Yes. 
We lost her. Oh, I'm sorry. You're back. Oh, yes. Plan, plan check and see is on Saturday at, at 10 o'clock. Thank you. It's on the website for all the links to get onto the meeting. Okay, thank you. Gwen Bailey. Gwen? Yeah, Glenn Bailey. Can you hear me? Yes, you yes. can. Okay, so I know that Carol will speak about the budget advocates update. Cindy's done Congress. Uh, I did want to remind um, all board members and stakeholders that the LA Neighborhood Council Coalition, which is the citywide coalition of neighbor councils for all 99, does meet on the first Saturday of the month, um, virtually until further notice. So 10 a.m. for Saturday, um, you're uh, encouraged to have a representative uh, represent Lake Baboa. Mm -hmm. And the, the 10 a.m. meeting immediately follows the DWP MOU uh, and the DWP advocacy committees. They rotate every other month. So you actually can do two meetings um, for the, in the same morning. And again, that's virtually also until further notice. So we would love to have Lake Alboa uh, be one of the participating neighborhood councils for that. Um, I'm going to try to jump back on for the discussion on the council file 20-0416 because I did uh, listen in on city council meeting today, but I will uh, wait until then. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll just make a note of it because I don't have a, a, um, music. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, we'll I be coming on. For us to answer. I'm sorry. Uh, there are a couple of questions that are posted that maybe that we, it's a good time to answer. Came in from an anonymous attendee that said the best part of the meeting so far is Betty's granddaughter. Thanks for sharing with us. <laughs> the next one is uh, they were asking about where is the information about what food is available daily being posted by the board member from uh, the LAUSD representative with, from Snorson's office had that slide presentation, wasn't it? Yes. And her name was? Tara. 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 Can you read her uh, email? Well, you can type it into the question, Ruth, if you could. Tara's email is, let me find it. It's T A R A dot V as in Victor, A H D as in David, A N as in Nancy, I at LAUSD dot net. Appreciate it. Thank you. I just sent it off. And the last one, Officer Espinoza mentioned that LAUSD will resume. Also, Tara had mentioned. Hello? Kristen, we can't hear you. Hello? Were you using an iPad? No. Well, she's fixing that. Officer Espinoza mentioned that LAUSD. I know my internet connection is really bad right now. I'm sorry. Okay. This is a learning experience for all of us. We're just doing the um, best we can. can. Hear me. Somebody had just mentioned that. Nope. Yep, can't hear you. Cutting out. Can't hear you. Tell your girls to get off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do you have any other questions from the uh, stakeholders, James? Yeah, I do. Uh, Officer Espinoza mentioned that LAUSD will resume classes, albeit in a different format, on August 18th. And they wanted to know, has this been confirmed to the public? Yes. 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 Has it been confirmed that uh, yes. it was going to be in a different format? No. No. no they don't. Okay. They don't know yet. They don't know. They don't. It has not been confirmed. It has not been confirmed what format 
They've only confirmed that LAUSD will resume on August 18th. And I've sent that off okay. the answer. I've answered that question. I don't know. And unless is um, nice that I can attend the meeting, hoping that even after COVID outbreak, outbreak Zoom continues with face-to-face -face meeting. Thank you. There are no more hands raised. We have no more questions and answers, so we'll we'll move on. Uh, LA City Charter Section 909 Annual City Budget Priorities. Each neighborhood council may present to the mayor and council an annual list of priorities for the city budget. The mayor shall inform certified neighborhood councils of the deadline for submission so that the input may be considered in a timely fashion. Uh, so number 10, budget advocates update, Carol Newman. Thank you, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay, um, so as you know, we published our annual white paper that was a few months ago. We printed up like 250 hard copies to be distributed to the neighborhood councils. And then we fell off the edge of the world. So we still have about 200 hard copies to distribute that we haven't been able to distribute because there are no face-to-face -face meetings of the neighborhood councils. So if anybody wants a hard copy of the white paper, uh, let me know and we can arrange that. Um, as you also know, in June of every year, we have had budget day. And that is a big deal because we would all meet 250 or 300 people in the uh, horseshoe in city council chambers. First, we'd have a great breakfast and then we'd all go into the horseshoe and we'd meet and we'd hear speakers from the city and uh, politics and uh, journalism. Uh, and we'd hear great speakers and then we'd all go into breakout sessions. Well, uh, again, we fell off the edge of the world this year. So we tried to have virtual budget day. We really tried, we were planning on that. In other words, obviously we couldn't have a face-to-face -face meeting, couldn't have a meeting in the city council horseshoe or any place else with 250, 300 people. So we were planning to do it by Zoom, uh, but uh, it was going to take place June 20th, June 20, 2020, as we told everybody. Um, and we just decided this week that it's too difficult. And it's too difficult because we don't know what to tell people. As you remember, if you, if you saw what the mayor uh, said uh, regarding his own budget, it's definitely a work in progress. Um, there's going to be substantial uh, losses a downturn in the revenue that the city's going to be getting this year and even worse next year, probably. So, um, you know, hotel taxes are down, sales taxes are down. So um, the, the ability of the city to provide services is really going to deteriorate. I mean, we don't think there's really any um, way to avoid that. So the mayor's budget, we were told, was a work in progress. It's not, it's not finalized, it's not fixed, it's just a projection. And we don't even think it's an accurate projection because it actually projects the revenue would go up for this year, which I think it will not do. As you know, the city year ends June 30th. So even between now and June 30th, uh, I mean, the city uh, income is going to go way down, revenue is gonna go way down. Um, uh, we just decided there was no way we could really keep on top of everything to have virtual budget day on June 20th to be able to present speakers who were on top of what was going on uh, by Zoom. So bu budget day this year has been postponed. We hope it's postponed and not canceled. Uh, we're looking at possibly doing it uh, in the fall if able to have uh, more of a sense of what the city budget is going to be like. As you also know, I mean, the, the city council holds hearings every beginning of May every year on the budget because the mayor presents the budget April 20th. Well, this year, 
can't do that. Can't. Uh, cutting out, Carol, a little bit. Uh, all right, uh, uh, let me talk into my phone. Is that any better? <clears throat> um, so the city canceled the hearings because, again, they don't know what to say. Um, so we're not going to have virtual budget day, but we will. The good news is we will have regional breakout sessions uh, the weekend of June 27. So the afternoon of June 27 and June 28, in all regions across the city, we're going to have regional breakout sessions. Uh, we're in region three. Uh, I'm setting up the breakout sessions. I don't know exactly when our region three breakout session is going to be, but I'll let you all know because I'd like you, it's all by Zoom. You don't have to go anywhere. Uh, so I will let you all know, you're all welcome to attend. Um, from, from Lake Balboa, the only two who can vote are Linda Gravani and myself because we're the budget reps. But you all, I want you all to log in and listen to what we say in the regional breakout sessions because uh, even more so than the neighborhood council meeting, it's a way to find out what everybody in the region, which is Southwest Valley, is thinking. Uh, also, at the regional breakout session, which, as I say, will take place either Saturday afternoon the 27th or Sunday afternoon the 28th, uh, we'll be voting for next year's budget advocates. Um, so again, important um, that you uh, log in and help us determine what's going to happen in the future. I'll let you all know. Uh, so I have a motion tonight. And um, have money still <laughs> through the end of the fiscal year and the budget advocates need more money as you probably know we don't actually get any money uh, unlike the neighborhood councils there's something in next year's budget that says we're going to get money I have a feeling that, that happen ultimately so the we are dependent uh on the kindness of of you all on the kindness of neighborhood councils that how we get our money. We, if we don't get money from the neighborhood councils, we don't get money. Lake Balboa has been very generous this year in giving us $1,500, but I'm asking for an additional $2,000 since we have money to still give away and we have about 15 days to give it away. So I move that Lake Balboa allocate an additional $2,000 for budget advocate activities and expenses to collect, review, and compile data for the 2021 white paper. Second. Gravani seconds. So Carol Newman made the motion. Gravani seconded. Any discussion? It's a good cause. All right. Uh, we need a vote count, uh, Danica. Okay, Carol Batista. How do you vote? She needs to unmute herself. Yeah, everybody needs to unmute themselves right now. Carol Batista. Carla. Your name? Carla. Oh, Carla. Yeah. <laughs> Carla, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, James Brown? Yes. Ruth Doxy? Yes. Kristen Fujitaki? Yes. Linda Gravani? Yes. Sandy Joseph? Yes. Gary Kay. Yes. Danica Middleton is a yes. Alan Nelson. Alan. I think we lost him. Okay, then should I put him down as abstaining, Ravani? Yeah. Uh, yes, let's do that because I don't know what else to do. He's not, um, yes. Okay. <laughs> Connecting now. Alan. Alan? It just snapped off again. All right, let's move on. Okay, uh, Carol Newman. Uh, if I'm eligible to vote, I vote yes. Uh, Mary Penniman is absent. Jeremy? Yes. Linda Pruitt? Yes. Tom Riley? Yes. Linda Schwering? Linda Schwering? Do you want to put a hand up, Linda? I can see yeah, you. Wait a second. She does have a hand up. I don't see up. her hand up. Put it next to your eyes. I, <laughs> I see it on the on the raise hand on the uh, participants. Part. Oh, got you. 
Okay, is, is, is it a yes? I can't see it, sorry guys. We don't know. Okay, so then put her as abstain? Yeah, I don't know what else to do. Does anyone okay. have any ideas? Can you, I, I'm sorry, Linda, I lost connection. I had to join by phone, so I can't do any of the host functions. Linda, Linda Schwering has her hand up on the participants listing. Yeah, I see it. We is know that, that, but we don't know what it no, means. Is it a so thumbs up or a thumbs down? Can you allow her to talk on the settings next to the hands, Linda Gravani? No. No chat function? No. It, there's enough people who haven't approved it already. That yeah, that it'll that pass. Good. Okay. Emma Scott. Emma doesn't Nine. vote on this. Oh, okay. yeah, I, was funding. Say I can't vote on funding. Okay. Jim Stein votes yes. Thank you, Jim. So are we marking Linda Schwering as an abstain? Yes. Yes. Thir 13. 13 approved, two abstains, and one ineligible. So 13 uh, approved, zero uh, no's. How many abstaining? You need to read them all the way across. Okay, 13 approved, zero no's, two abstains, one ineligible. Thank you. That's only 16, aren't there 17 Yeah, years? you forgot the absent. Oh, um, sorry. Um, Mary uh, Yeah, Mary I've got it. Sorry about the voting, guys, for Alan and for Linda. Uh, I don't know what to do in a case like this, so we're going to make up our own rules. Who was ineligible? Uh, Emma. I, uh, I can't do funding. Oh. I'm the UCF. Yeah. Okay, number 11, announcements and reports. Uh, the president update. Uh, ethics expiration for Sandy and Carol are May 28 of 2020. So before the next meeting, you do have to take your ethics. Kristen, yours expires on May 29. Tom Riley, yours uh, expires on July 31 of 2020. Uh, we have funding expiration on June 30 for Sandy, Linda Pruitt, Tom Riley, Mary, Jim Stein, Alan, Kristen, and Carla. So that's your funding training. So you have uh, until June 30th to take that training. I've already fixed my funding and Betty knows about it. Okay, well, I'm just explaining that if they don't, uh, they will not be eligible to vote in the um, next meeting. Not meeting the next meeting now, the next meeting after their expiration date. Uh, Treasurer Jim Stein, do you have anything to tell us? Uh, uh, as far as the report goes, anything updating? How's funding doing? Well, um, at, if we if when we're finished tonight, if everything is approved, we'll have about ten thousand dollars left. Whether or not uh, we have that money for next year, what remains to be seen. Okay. Uh, emergency preparedness, Linda Pruitt. Yes, we did not have a meeting in March because I spent about half of March in the hospital. Um, and I didn't call one for mm. April because I haven't learned how to do Zoom meetings yet. Uh, or from, from May, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, I hope to have the first EP Zoom meeting on June 13th. So stay tuned for that. Um, and that's pretty up, pretty much up for me. You'll be getting, you'll all be getting a little note from me, thanks to Gary Kay, about uh, what would we do if we had an earthquake at this point? Woohoo! <laughs> think about it. Out I hope not. Like here in the valley in Chatsworth. Get the hell out of Dodge. Yep. <laughs> it's uh, this we need to think about though. So you'll be getting an email from me on that. Don't forget, we're recording this, Jim Stein. <laughs> <laughs> and that's I know, that's, that's, why, that's why I haven't said anything wrong. <laughs> Go, Jim. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. Health and Public Safety, James Brown. 
Before I get into that, I'm, re I'm reading a, a comment from Glenn Bailey who says election for budget advocates is not just for next year, rather for a two year term until 2022. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. And uh, Jim, the question is 10,000 is the $10,000 figure what's remaining for NPGs? No. No, no we're. Tara says that. That'll come up later then. Oh, well, we move things around as we need them. Right, right, exactly. Okay, uh, my report, as many of you know, um, everyone in Los Angeles County can now have, can now ha get a COVID-19 test free of charge, whether you have symptoms or not. Hmm. In the Lake Balboa area, there are now two locations, uh, Northridge Hospital at the, at the uh, Roscoe and Reseda intersection, and at the Northridge Mall, that's going to be opening uh, this week. Uh, go to Lake Balboa NC website, and you'll be able to see the Lake Balboa video, where you will find out about how easy it is to get these tests, mm -hmm. and a bit of describing uh, and how you actually go to the facility to get the test. Uh, or you can go on to coronavirus.lacity.gov forward slash testing, fill out the information to set an appointment, and the tests are prioritized uh, accordingly, according to age, physical condition, and the like. While we were concerned about COVID-19 panic, we must also be prepared for any other emergency that might take place. Uh, in an emergency, don't hesitate to call 911, especially if you experience any heart or breathing problems or know of someone experiencing an opioid overdose. Uh, today is National Nurses Day where we help celebrate what the nurses and first responders have done for us. And anytime we have the opportunity to do that, that's a good thing. From the public safety standpoint, beginning on Monday, May 11th, riders on public transit will be required to wear face coverings on city transit and dash lines. Uh, next week uh, at West Valley LAPD, we'll have a CPAP meeting, Community Police Advisory Board, where the community will be uh, asked to attend and started, welcome to attend, and where we'll, we'll have special guests uh, there, as well as giving the public the opportunity to speak with the captain and senior lead officers. We'll also be live streaming as we have done since January. We will live stream this meeting as well on Facebook Live uh, because we've experienced quite a great deal of success with hundreds of people uh, viewing these meetings. Uh, as the captain said in the June meeting, we'll also combine that with Zoom. Um, Texting is not, and to 911 is now available throughout the Los Angeles County. Also on the Lake Balboa website, there's a flyer that was posted regarding free delivery of groceries for elder citizens. That is free delivery of groceries for elder citizens. And so all of this is on the Lake Balboa website. And I urge everyone uh, listening and looking at this presentation to go on lakebalboanc.org to check it out. Thanks very much. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, Tom Riley, land use. Yes, um, a couple of things following up on James. At the moment, there's at least 104 cases of the virus in Lake Balboa. Um, that's the end of that, that's for you, James. Number two, um, it appears that the neighborhood council, not the neighborhood, the city council approved the rollover of the funds, I don't know if Glenn mentioned that or not. Oh, Details are coming. But uh, at a local level, what's important is the city council voted last week to, they were unanimous in their vote that the want of the 7 Eleven at uh, Balboa and Satakoy was denied hmm. so they and they denied it because of us not wanting it to happen yay so we do serve a purpose congratulations thank you yay. for your help. Uh, thank you tom thank you yeah um i'll drink to that uh, <laughs> And that's all I have about land use at the moment. Thank you. Uh, outreach, Kristen? Hi, sorry. Um, 
I had to switch to my phone, so I'm not on my laptop anymore. Uh, I just wanted to say that we have been posting on our social media. So if you're on here and you check our Facebook page, um, we also have an Instagram page as well, trying to share updates about what's going on regarding COVID-19 and everything going on with the neighborhood council. So please follow us on social media. We also have a Twitter account as well. Thank you very much to Aaron Devandry for helping with all of that as usual. Um, and that's it. Thank you. And we have 31 attendees. We've got 17 panelists and 31 attendees. So woohoo! thank you. That's working. Oh, I'm sorry. I had one more thing. I forgot. Um, uh, Tara had mentioned earlier about the grab and go food centers. Yes, I have been posting about that. If I stop by, um, I do try to post a picture of the food on our social media as well. So families can know what is available to them. Um, so that is available on our Facebook page and our Instagram page. Um, usually I try to post at least two to three times a week of the different food options that they have. And I want to say a quick thank you very much to all of the workers that are working there, volunteering their time and making sure that our families in Lake Bobo and the surrounding West Valley area have access to food. It's so important. And to Birmingham High School for also offering a food services their school as well. Great, great. Thank you very much. Uh, next would be Rec and Park, Jim Stein, anything new? Uh, no, no comments. Sepulveda, the Basin Wildlife Area Steering Committee, Ruth Doxy. Yes, several things. Um, they were the winner of the 2020 Best of Lake Balboa Awards in the category of Wildlife Refuge by the Lake Balboa Award Program. And which is basically just a marketing ploy. Um, <laughs> from uh, Pat Bates, um, when I asked them what comments to make, Pat Bates was said that I'm in the basin and the reserve several times a week. While it is not crowded at all and people are somewhat okay at wearing masks and keeping social distance, the wildlife area has become the wild west with fishing, bike riders, dogs, boom boxes, etc. And encampments are returning. That's the end of the quote. So the committee is requesting more ranger visits to the wildlife preserve and along the LA River. So we've been pushing for a dedicated ranger station in the preserve, but that's probably pretty unlikely given the economic outfall from the pandemic. So for the time being, if we could, um, the idea of reserve rangers, similar to reserve LAPD officers, we could um, put that idea forward, perhaps that would help us out. In the meantime, you can uh, report park situations using this link, https colon backslash backslash m dot laparks.org. You can also upload photos. And lastly, the many of the 1600 seedlings that they planted in November are flourishing and being visited by a variety of pollinators, which was the goal for the pollinator project. That's it for me. And I'll send this to uh, Lydia Grant and Danica Middleton. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Linda, we have a question from Michelle. What property did Tom say on Satakoy and Balboa? Oh, um, the, uh, at the north east corner of the new shopping center, there's a number of shops in there. There's a vacant one. They want to put a 7-Eleven in there. But 7-Eleven wants a beer and wine license, and we were opposed to that. And the um, city council supported our objection. Thank you. Number 12, funding. Discussion of possible action regarding approval of February monthly expense report. Jim Stein. Yes. Uh, um, Everyone got a copy of the of February uh, MER. I'd like to make a motion to approve the, the February MER. Second. I had some questions. Who said second? I did. Two. Who said I? James. Who? Brown. James. Brown. Brown. James Brown. Okay. Jim Stein made the motion. James Brown seconded. Discussion. Yes, I have a question. Who were the McDonald's receipts from? There's no name on them. Uh, I accidentally handed, I went in the McDonald's drive-thru and handed them the wrong uh, credit card. So oh, I had okay. to 
go back in through the drive-thru, get a copy of that, <laughs> put it on my other, on my correct uh, credit card, and then submit both of them. It was, it was very intensive. Sounds like okay, it. God forbid, you. God forbid that I put that, that hamburger <laughs> on the right. NC credit card. <laughs> I'll grill you up a burger. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other comments? Okay. Let's do a vote, please, Danica. Okay. Carla Batista. Uh, mute, unmute yourself, yourself. Carla. Un Carla. Everyone, unmute yourself. Carla. Yes, she is. Okay. There you go. Yes. James Brown. Yes. Ruth Doxy? Yes. Kristen Fujitaki? Yes. Linda Gravani? Yes. Sandy Joseph? Yes. Gary Kay? Yes. Danica Middleton is a yes. Alan Nelson? <laughs> unmute yourself, Alan. Alan, can you unmute, unmute yourself? There you, oh, there you go. Alan Nelson? Still can't hear gonna, you. Is she going to abstain again? Yep. <laughs> yep, he'll abstain. Okay. Carol Newman. Yes. Mary Penniman is not there. She's absent. Gary Pesnick. 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 Like yes. Sonic the Hedgehog. Pesnick. No, Pesnick. 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 There you go. I'll get it. <laughs> Linda Pruitt. Yes. Tom Riley. Yes. Linda Schwering. I couldn't hear you. Uh, all right, how do you vote? Yes or no? Not knowing the content, I am unable to vote. Okay, so you will abstain. Okay, great. Um, Thank you. And Emma Scott is not eligible. And Jim Stein. Yes. Can you conf this is Linda Schwering. Can you confirm what item you are on? I lost you completely. We're on item number 12, 12 is the February Mur. Okay, just uh, I'll I'll control the meeting. It's number 12. What is the count, please? Thank Danica? you. Okay. It is 13 yeses, zero no's, two abstains, one ineligible, and one absent. Uh, number 13, funding, discussion of possible action regarding uh, approval of March monthly expense report, Jim Stein. Number 13, I make a motion Thank to approve. You. Sorry. Number 13, I make a motion to approve the March 2020 MER. I second. Who said I? Danica Middleton. Thank you. Jim Stein made the motion, Danica seconded. Discussion. Oh, let's see. Yes. Oh, I just had a question, yes, about um, on ex number eight of the expenditures. It was for a signs for the July 4th, and it was under um, general operations expenditures for office. So why, why wasn't it outreach? It seems like putting signs up would be more like outreach. That was James Brown. What? That was your signs that said no fireworks. The community got a Correct. real problem out of that. Honestly, uh, how long ago was that? More than a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't help it if it's on that March Murr now. <laughs> okay, let me let me go back and and find it and and see if I can find it, okay? I went to the oh, table to look at all the stuff, and yeah, I think I should be able to ask the questions. Yeah, ain't this fun? That's right. Okay. Let's go here. Uh, down the page here. Okay, just one moment, Jim. 
Uh, so you're questioning the category that it's under? Is that what you're questioning? Yeah, I'm just wondering. It's not that I'm not going to approve it or anything, but just seemed like a. She's right. You know. Did... What what page what page of the mer is it on? It's the. I didn't look at the page. I have to the second through. page. Second page. It's number eight. Number eight. Expenditures. Ruth, you don't have well, this was all the way back the from room. all the way back from October. They uh -huh. it finally gotten around to reimbursing him. This was before I even was yeah. was was treasurer. They just finally got around to the money sat there, and they finally got around to reimbursing him. That's all. Oh, thank moves, goodness. I asked about that. But I think what Ruth wanted clarification was was regarding it being under general operations expenditure. Right. Is what was opposed out to outreach yeah the category you, itself you were using it for your I meeting, probably right for your meeting james can you say those among you guys well. i would i will have to, yeah. i will have to go and see if i can find james hart and find what find out why he did that Ruth. i'm very oh. sorry oh it's no big deal i honestly no don't question. know okay good, good question ruth thank you Thank you, James. So, so going forward, something like that would be under, is it under outreach? Is that correct? Or would it be under operation expenditure? Uh, Looks like it should be outreach. Uh, I think outreach. Okay. So we have new treasurer. We'll have a new category going forward. Excellent. No more signs for you, James. Hey, you know, wait a second. We, we don't want to have all this cross talking. We need to get done with our business here. So, are we going to leave it in general operations and everybody's okay with that? And that's on video, Ruth. Uh, <laughs> I know. So, are we going to leave it or do we want to make a motion to move it or what? Yeah, we have the motion. All we need to do is vote. So, you're okay with the vote? Yeah. Okay. Danica? Yes. Okay. Okay. So who made the motion on this one? Jim. I made a motion to made a motion to approve the March murder. Okay. Second it. Okay. All right. Carla Batista. Yes. James Brown. Yes. Ruth Doxy. Yes. Kristen Fujikaki. Yes. Linda Gravani. Uh, yes, and we're getting background noise from somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sandy Joseph. Out. Sandy Joseph. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Gary Kay. Yes. Danica Middleton is a yes. Alan Nelson. Still abstaining. Carol Newman. Carol? Yes. Mary yes. Is, got it. Mary is absent. Jim Pisanic. Uh, Jeremy Pisanic. Yes. I'll get it right. Linda Pruitt. Yes. Tom Riley. Yes. Linda Schwering. Yes. Emma Scott is ineligible. Jim Stein. Yes. Great. Someone in the comments asks if uh, someone seconded. Who seconded that motion? Wasn't it Danica? I did, Danica Middleton. I did, Danica Middleton second. Okay, we got it. Danica, okay. a high five. <laughs> okay, so 14 yes, zero no, one abstain, one ineligible, one absent. Thank you. Number 14, land use. Discussion of possible action regarding 1601, I'm sorry, 16015 Sherman Way, DIR-2020-0855. Um, the proposed project consists of the demolition of a commercial building and the construction, use, and maintenance of a four-story, 45-foot high, approximate 24,566 square foot affordable housing project with permanent supportive housing services and 48 residential dwelling units. And I do want to read another statement before we uh, give it, before I give it over to Tom Riley. 
This project has already been approved by city planning. The developers wanted our community to know about the project and if possible, receive a Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council thumbs up. This is being developed with Triple H funds for the area homeless elderly women. The location is ideal because of local transportation and the future site for Vallarta Supermarket, which will be across the street where Toys R Us used to be. There will be on-site social workers and case managers to assist the residents. This project will fulfill our community's responsibility to provide new housing for the homeless. Grand opening should be December 2021. Tom Riley? I, I think that's right. Um, to add a little bit to it, this project, um, how best can I say this? Each unit, the 48 units are like an apartment and they all have bedrooms, living rooms, kitchens, etc. The thing that is one of the things that's exciting about the project is that these women who are there who have been battered women over the years are in their 60s and 70s. 30% of their income goes towards their rent. They are there for as long as they want to live there and but they do not have cars they, okay just w one second please uh jeremy would you mind putting that uh, slide up please it's the powerpoint <clears throat> on second thought <laughs> um anyways this is a, a fantastic project there we go. Is this it? Oh, Jeremy, there we go. That's the project. It's across the street from um, the, the new grocery store where Toys R Us was. Uh, also across the street is a five-story apartment complex going up. But what is exciting about this from a transportation point of view there are no cars that are required of these people. They cannot, none of them have cars. Uh, and it, their only means of moving around is if the family picks them up or public transit. No, not now. Huh? Wh who asked me what? I think that was Linda Schwering. Oh. In a, but here, no, as it is possible. It was not they don't add anything to transportation. They are older individuals, so they're not of a concern to the community. They themselves are well protected by the security of the building. There are only four parking spaces or three parking spaces required for this project. And they are an asset to the local retailers in the community because they have their own kitchens, their own whatever. And so all the community, the restaurants and the grocery stores, et cetera, are going to benefit by their existence. It also helps the community because women who have had problems are now being protected. And this is also a project that is well uh, supported by Nuri Martini's office. And this is a well-established organization. Uh, they have, in the last 30 years, they have roughly 20 projects in Southern California. They, um, have 100 units in downtown LA, which is very successful. They are supported by a number of nonprofit organizations and they want our support. Yesterday or last night, uh, a number of us had an opportunity to listen to the developer as to the value of this project and what the concerns were. And we all thought it was a great project. 
Uh, and if anybody wants from that meeting wants to say a few words, please do so. I do. I think this is a great asset to the community, what it is, and the fact that it takes nothing out of the community is a way of adding traffic, et cetera. It's a benefit Come on, Tom. to everybody involved. I, uh, I'd like to say something in agreement with what Thomas just said. I think it makes proper use of measure HHH funds. It lends to the community and it helps to take women who've been battered, who come from uh, uh, environments that were life-threatening. It helps to take them off the street. They're elderly individuals and it helps to provide the type of protection to them so that they don't become a statistic. So I, for one, wholeheartedly agree uh, with what Tom is saying. I endorse this project and I urge others to do so. You want to make a motion, Tom? Yes, I make a motion to approve this project uh, at this time. Second. Uh, Who's second? Who's Tom, second? Riley, Tom Riley made the motion. Who seconded? James. James. Well. Me? James Brown. Thank you. Yeah, when it dealt, I always go with James. <laughs> um, it, this is Kristen. I just wanted to make a comment that Jeremy's computer uh, stopped working and he had to leave the meeting. Mm. So he is not here right now. He said he'll be back soon. He left. Okay, so please, uh, Secretary, please show at 843, Jeremy has left the meeting. Got it. Thank we you. Have, uh, Thank two you. comments Appreciate about the Otis place. One person asks why it's called Otis. And all of us do not have the answer. And the other person asks, did the project have to be approved by your land use committee? And no, at this point it's approved, it has already been approved by the neighborhood, not the neighborhood council, but by the city council. And one of the reasons is because of the virus and how it has set, upset the procedure of programming. Uh, planning like everybody else, city planning like everybody else is working out of their houses. So it's very difficult to bring it together. But it is such a good project, whether it was done the normal way or the way we're doing it now, I, I don't think it makes much difference. I have a question. What was the, the name of the organization? You said that the organization has a hundred units in downtown LA, and I just wonder what what is Daylight that organization? Daylight Community Development. Green light. Daylight. 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 Daylight it's Community developer. Development. They are the ones who will do the building. Daylight. We also have Sonia on the call from Daylight Community Development. I don't know ah, if she wanted to great. speak. Uh, Linda, I don't have access to allow her to speak because I'm calling from my phone now, but if you want to let her. Sonia? Hi, everybody. Away. This is Sonia Away. with Daylight Community Development. It's great to meet you all. Thanks for your support of the project. Um, I just wanted to chime in. I wrote in the comments, but we named the project Oatsy's Place to honor Mary Louise Oates, who is a longtime supporter of the Downtown Women's Center, which is the service provider on the project. Oh. Um, and to clarify, there are three organizations that are working on this project. So my organization, Daylight Community Development, is an affordable housing developer. We work with the Decro Group, another affordable housing developer in Los Angeles. They own um, more than 20 affordable housing projects in the city um, and operate them. And then the Downtown Women's Center, our service provider, is what Tom was referencing with more than 100 units of supportive housing in downtown LA. Thank you. Thank you. So the point being is it's a well-established organization and with 30 years experience, they know what they're doing and how they're doing. And again, it's an asset to the community. And Linda, put your hand back up. Pro it. I pro it. You have okay. a question, Linda? Yes, I just, just have a comment. And I made this comment at the uh, land use committee meeting. I am a member of that committee and I have been involved with the National Organization for Women for many years. And I cannot tell you how much this is needed 
in the valley. Uh, it really is, and I give it my full support 100%, and I hope you all will as well. Thank you. Sonia, how many operations or facilities are being built or exist in uh, the valley at the moment? You know, I can't speak to exactly how many permanent supportive housing projects are in the valley at the moment. Um, I can look, I can deliver that information to the group later. Uh, the DECRO group, our partner, operates for affordable housing projects in the valley right now. No, I've been talking about that. Isn't there seven or eight facilities that exist here in the valley? Canoga Park, North uh, Hills, etc. Um, yeah, so there are those four projects that our partner, the DECRO group, currently operates in the valley. Exactly. So we've been operating in the valley for many years, if, I think, if, if that's the question. Yes. So it, it's... Are there no other questions um, yeah, about there is. the specific... Oh, um, there is. Sorry? There's another question. Someone asks, is the city approving projects without Lake Balboa Council approval? <laughs> Hence my question to 7650 Balboa, seven story project. Oh, yep, I didn't scroll down. Tell me. Uh, the, the answer is that the city will listen to what we propose and make a decision based on our situation or concerns as well as everything else involved. Okay, I, I'm gonna stop right here because that's off topic. Uh, we're talking about uh, the project that's on Sherman Way. Uh, we'll have to address that as another time. Uh, and we've got a motion on the floor for this particular project at 16015 Sherman Way, and we need to stay on that topic. So if we have no other questions about that, let's take a, a vote. Um, before you take the vote, I did want to, you to know that Jeremy is back on the call. Jeremy returned at 8.44 p.m. Okay, now, now voting. Carla Batista. Yes. James Brown. Yes. Ruth Doxey. Yes. Kristen Fujitaki. Yes. Linda Gravani. Yes. Sandy Joseph. Yes. Gary Kay. Yes. Danica Middleton is a yes. Carol Newman. Uh, Carol, uh, Carol Newman. Yes. Alan Nelson. He's still. Yes. Oh. No, was that out? Okay, Alan Nelson is still abstaining. Carol Newman is a yes. Mary is absent. Jeremy? Yes. Linda Pruitt? Yes. Tom Riley? Yes. Linda Schwering? <laughs> she will abstain. Emma Scott is ineligible. And Jim Stein? Why yes. is she ineligible? No, 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 no. Emma is eligible. Is eligible. Oh. I'm just not money. Oh, because it's not money. Okay. Yeah. Emma Scott? Okay. All right. Um, since uh, Jeremy was not there for the entire time, he can't, he's ineligible. Okay. So that's 13 yeses, zero noes, three of three. Uh, hang on a sec. Sorry, I put them in the wrong spot. One abstain, two ineligibles, and one absent. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, number 15, discussion and possible action regarding council file 20-0416, allows neighborhood council funds to roll over for the next fiscal year. Uh, there is a screen share. Jeremy, can you do that for council file, please? Let me pull that up. Give me just one moment. What this basically is, is that because we have not been able to have meetings, because much of the money that has been uh, allocated for various uh, activities and events within the community could not be done. Uh, we have extra money in the budget that we normally wouldn't have had if we were able to meet. Um, if we were able to meet for meetings, we would have been able to spend the funds at uh, other events or uh, MPGs or whatever. Um, and so uh, the Valley of Neighborhood, Valley Neighborhood um, 
uh, have Valley Neighborhood Councils have uh, requested that our monies roll over. Uh, and there was a council uh, file, which is 20416, uh, asking that the money be rolled over. Um, so <clears throat> in order for us to discuss it, we need to make the motion. So I move that Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council forward a community impact statement on council 20-0416, agreeing that all remaining funds on June 30, 2020 be rolled over to 2021-2020-2021 uh, budget for each neighborhood council's funds. I okay. second. Who's I? Danica Middleton. Second. Thank you. So Gravani made the motion. <laughs> it's one of us. Middleton seconded. Discussion. Um, and I need to um, somehow find where the Q&A is so we can get, um, sorry, just a second. Glenn Bailey. Glenn? Yes, I'm here. Oh, good. It worked. <laughs> now if you can get him to talk. Okay, so, so I'm sorry. Um, uh, I, I want to be respectful of your time, but I want you to be aware of the amendments that were approved today. Did you already present that information? No, uh -uh. we couldn't because it wasn't on our agenda. They voted today. Uh, well, I think it's properly agendized. <laughs> You've got the council file and the uh, council file number includes the motion plus any amendments. So if I may, um, I think the one that you're probably most interested is the amendment that affects the rollover. It's only one long sentence. If you'd like, I can read it. Please. Okay. Um, first of all, just let me let you know that there were four votes today. It was rather contentious. Um, I won't go into all the details, but just know that there were two amendments to the motion you have in front of you and that the whole package as amended with the two amendments ended up passing unanimously 15-0. Um, so that was how it ended up. The, the part that um, regarding the rollover amendment, I'm just reading just the amendment for the rollover, affecting the rollover. It's to uh, instruct the city clerk and the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment to allow neighborhood council funds to be rolled over if encumbered by June 30th, 2020. Hmm into fiscal year 2020 to 2021 without a corresponding reduction to the regular budget allocation of funds to each neighbor council for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020. That's the end of the amendment. Um, just uh, two, if I may, two points, uh, two points uh, for those of you who've been involved with funding of neighbor councils, you know that unlike city departments, uh, neighbor councils don't have the ability to, to encumber funds. However, since this is what city council voted for, um, my guess is city clerk and done, but mainly city clerk funding will need to figure out a way for us to encumber funds. Uh, as you also know, if, for payment requests, the current deadline each year is July 1 for checks. And so this motion allows the encumbrance to happen through June 30th. That's a huge change. And um, as you know, our purchase card is currently able to be used until June 18th. This would change that presumably till June 30th. So another big change. So um, I don't know how um, how promptly uh, this funding program will work to implement this, but since it's the action of city council, you know, that we have to expect that it'll be their job. The only other thing I just want to share with you, it's not part of your motion, but just be aware of, in the mayor's proposed budget for neighbor councils, he proposed our annual allocation to be 32,000, but he also specifically maintained the 
existing $10,000 rollover, which is an ordinance law. Mm. That is part of the city budget proposed by the mayor, which of course the city council can change. And so what's unclear of this motion today is if they intend to do away with that $10,000 uh, basically automatic rollover or not. That's an unanswered question um, in my mind. Um, the way the way this was worded, it wasn't specifically discussed and nor was it just no council member mentioned the fact that neighbor councils have never had the opportunity to encumber funds other than to spit payment requests. So, um, you know, whatever you do on this uh, in terms of taking a position if you include in your uh, community impact statement or your follow up with your with your council member, which is great because she's president of the council is to get clarification it seems to me on you know on the encumbrance, how do you encumber and what's what's going to happen with the automatic current automatic 10,000 rollover. Now obviously if you vote if you vote to encumber every single dollar that you have remaining, that's a moot point. But if you don't vote to encumber every single dollar, then that 10,000 rollover uh, procedure, you know, would be relevant. So I think that's all I have to say. If you have any questions, if you have time, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thank you, Glenn. So, um, we can we can take this off the screen. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, so, if we vote in favor uh, as the uh, um, motion is, uh, there's already an amendment. I'm taking a moment. Um, Linda, Linda, if you can still hear me, you can yeah. vote. You can. You can uh, take a vote that you support the motion as originally introduced, um, if you like that version better. I mean, but but you I have to be you have to be careful how you submit your CIS because when you say you support, you you're now supporting the council file as it exists. As yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'll be careful. <laughs> I'll be careful. Okay, so the amendments, uh, any further discussion on, on this uh, motion? There is a question. Should, should we read, at, question. make sure that we read it as, as it's written? We, we, we heard uh, Glenn's revised version, the, the, the amended version, but should we read it as it is now? No, we're not going to amend our vote. No, I'm not saying amend our vote, but reading reading it as it's written, as we see it, just so that we have a clarity in terms of the difference. Does anyone want that? I thought she did. Pardon me, Danica? I thought you did. Oh, did you want to reread the, the motion? The motion is, I move that Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council forward a community impact statement on council file 20-0416, agreeing that all remaining funds on June 30, 2020 be rolled over to 2020-2021 budget for each neighborhood council's funds. I, That's the motion. I, I apologize. I, I meant reading what's actually on that document that was just being shared, the actual written. No. Order. No. Uh, no. Okay. I don't think so. There is a question. Question being, please ask what encumbered means. To me, it means you vote on something, but don't spend it until next fiscal year. What if, like COVID-19 changes or some other delay? Uh, I believe encumbered means you identify how you want the money to be spent whether it's spent or not, correct? We identify that we wanna have, you know, several different NPGs to various organizations uh, that we wanna do a mural or whatever it is that we wanna do and we identify how that money is actually going to be spent. Right. I also think, this is always dangerous, but I also think these funds are restricted funds so they are gonna be there, James. You can't take them if another virus comes, 
or whatever, the funds are not in the general funds, they're in restricted funds. So once that has been adapted, then those funds are there. They can't take them away from us. Oh. Right, that was, a, that was a question from an attendee. Will there be a run on MPGs as a result of that? Could be. Could be. Any other questions? Yeah, there's one. Will there be a run on NP? Oh, no, they just took it away. I just. <laughs> James just mentioned that one. Any others? No, Linda Schwering is no longer on the call. Please identify the time. The 902. Thank you. All right, let's continue with the vote, please. Okay, hang on one sec. Okay, Carla Batista. Yes. James Brown. Yes. Ruth Doxy. Yes. Kristen Fujitaki. Yes. Linda Gravani. Yes. Sandy Joseph. Yes. Gary Kay. Yes. Danica Middleton is a yes. Alan Nelson. Uh, he will abstain. Carol Newman. Yes. Mary Penniman is absent. Jeremy. Pisanic? Yes. Linda Pruitt? Yes. Tom Riley? Yes. Linda Schwering? She left. She, uh, that's right, sorry. Okay. She left. And Emma Scott? Oh, this uh, is a funding issue, so she can't vote. Uh, Jim Stein? Yes. Thirteen yeses, zero noes, one abstain, one ineligible, one absent. Uh, hang on. Sorry, I wrote that in the wrong spot. Okay, thirteen yeses, zero noes, two abstains, one ineligible, and one absent. Thank you. Um, number two absent: Linda Schwering and Mary Penamon. Mary is absent. Mary has not been on the, the webinar at all today. Right. Okay. Sorry. Right. Okay. Yes. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Ruth. 13 yeses, zero noes, one abstain, one ineligible, two absence. Number 16, discussion of possible action regarding the mayor's budget cutting of uh, neighborhood council funds. Well, uh, Glenn Bailey just mentioned that, uh, that the plan by the mayor is to have our funds at $32,000 next year uh, and possibly the rollover of uh, the $10,000. I just thought we needed to uh, know about that so that we can make some plans for our budget for next year. Uh, we don't necessarily have to discuss it, but we discuss it, but we need to know that that's in the cards. And again, we may even have less money than that. Uh, number 17, discussion of possible action regarding 2021-2021 budget, uh, which is due at the next Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council meeting. Kim Stein, do you have some comments? Uh, that's enough. <laughs> uh, well, we, we left we left a huge amount of slack this last year because we thought we were going to do uh, some community improvement, and so um, we're ending the year with over eleven thousand dollars in in the community improvement piece of the pie. Um, we. Obviously, we didn't do any commun community improvement. So uh, I think we ought to think about uh, whether we're going to try and, uh, and, and put some money in NPGs or what have you toward schools. That's, we seem to get a lot done that way. So I, I just wish that uh, everyone would think about that. I do think that everyone needs to be considering uh, the past budgets that we have. Do we want something similar? Do we want to have some money in a different bucket? 
uh, those are the kinds of questions you need to answer so that we have an idea along the way as to uh, what projects we need to have for next year, uh, whether or not we have the money. We need to plan for us having uh, $42,000 plus rollover money, uh, even though it's not going to happen. But if, it, um, if we do have extra money, how are we going to spend it? If we don't have money, what are we going to get rid of? So our budget is due uh, at the next meeting. So just think about it and let Jim Stein uh, know. How about that? Um, number 18, discussion of possible action regarding year-end expenses. Um, currently, we have May 20 as the final date to request an event approval for current fiscal year. June 1, final day to submit a check payment request using current fiscal year funds. Uh, and June 20, final day for any bank card transaction using current fiscal year funds. And we just got an update from Glenn Bailey uh, that those, some of those dates changed. But if we keep that in mind, at least we'll be okay. So if we have anything that we're, we're still needing to purchase, know that uh, we got to get on with it. Any questions? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, on that note, uh, uh, it's not on the agenda, so we can't vote on it. We can't talk about things... it. If it's not on the agenda, we can't talk about it. No, we, we, we may have to uh, have a meeting between now and our next scheduled meeting in order to move funds around. Uh, number 19, funding. Discussion of possible action regarding the purchase of Zoom Pro for Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council uh, by Gravani. It was uh, $149.90 for one year subscription and up to $40 per month. Uh, what happened is Department of Neighborhood Empowerment was to provide us with a license for the webinar, the Zoom webinar. Uh, it did not come through. Um, I understand that there was an email that was sent out last Friday, which I did not receive. Hmm. Um, but getting a license last Friday wasn't enough time. I mean, look at all the, the hurdles we have to go through tonight, and we've had some practice at it. Uh, if we just got it on Friday without any practice. So I went uh, rogue, and I purchased it uh, under emergency money for Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council. Uh, what I didn't know at the time, <clears throat> excuse me, was that uh, there needed to be another $40 a month for the video so we can see each other. So that is something that I also purchased, but I do want it to be uh, in the minutes that this is an ongoing expense for as long as we're using the Zoom webinar. Um, may, I ask, may I say something? No. We have to yeah. make it. We have to make a motion first, and then you can say something. Okay, please do. Um, I move uh, that Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council authorize the expenditure of $149.90 for Zoom Pro one-year subscription and up to $40 per month ongoing expenses for Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council video webinars. Okay. <laughs> Who seconded? I'll give it to Tom, Tom Riley. Okay, Gravani made the motion, Tom Riley seconded. Discussion, Jim Stein. I found out uh, today that um, they want a BAC for this. Remember I asked you? They want what? They want a BAC before they'll approve it. What's a BAC? Board Active, Board active certification. certification. What's a BAC? It's the vote count for the neighborhood council approving it, and that's what we're doing now, yeah. if it passes. I have a question. Linda? Uh, will committee chairs be able to use this so we can do meetings via Zoom? Yes. And you'll teach us how to do that? Yes. OK. <laughs> So just, just for clarity, we're, we're sharing all the same account uh, for the various different yeah. committees and whatnot. Yeah. Anna, Anna Measles. Yeah, yeah. hi Linda, what's the difference between regular Zoom and um, the pro, what added services do you get? Because we now have Zoom 
and we're having a meeting in a couple of weeks, but we're going to have a committee meeting next week. Okay, Zoom is 149, well, it's like 1490, 90 something every month. I didn't realize we didn't need to purchase it, but I purchased for the year. So we don't have to go through approving it all the time. In order for us to use the video portion, it's a $40 a month charge. It's a little less if you buy it for the year. Um, so it's like $38, uh, but that's why the motion is up to $40. Does so you're saying the, the license purchasing of the Zoom through the city, there is no video, there's only the audible? I don't know what the city has purchased for you. Uh, we opted not to wait for done. So I went ahead and I purchased it. Well, the communication I had with um, our NEA, I think it's very similar to the ones that I've been having to all the other Zoom meetings I have. You can or cannot if you want yourself to be visible on the screen. They said something about there was a full screen and sectioned up screens. So I don't understand why you guys have to pay $150 plus $40 more. I don't either, but that's uh, without the video, um, it wouldn't be as exciting. Right. <laughs> I'm not sure it would be a public meeting either. Can I say something? I mean, no, Anna, Anna, she had to purchase it because the link from Dunn did not come through until Friday. So since our meeting's ton tonight, we needed to get on training everybody on our board. So that's why she just went and purchased it. Cindy? She's muted. Cindy is muted. Yeah, I'm trying to unmute you, Cindy. Cindy? Hello, Cindy. I'm sorry, I can't unmute you, Cindy. Not only that, she disappeared. She went away. Oh. Oh, there she is. There she is. Where? She's the third one down. Oh, there she is. Now she's second. Hi there. Are you able to hear me? Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm so sorry. It, um, I think it's um, to your advantage to have the additional account. The system yeah. that uh, Dunn is providing is the enterprise system. You can look at that on Zoom uh, to see. They are recommending that you not have this where you see each other. That's true. They're recommending that you'll all be participants and they're recommending that everybody who, um, like such as your stakeholders, will have to wait and they will not. We oh, lost her. We lost you and they will not something. And that's why we have to vote against it. <laughs> I, I see, I think it would affect whether or not the meeting is genuinely public or not. Hmm. We can't hear you, Cindy. I think you get the gist of my message. Yes, you get you came back what the just of your message that i think you should have an additional one if you have committees you need to be functioning and um you but you do need to find out about the interaction with the stakeholders they want you only to be allowing them to speak during each item as you as you do but um very limited in being able to see what's going on so you're saying that Dunn doesn't want us to have video? No, they don't want you showing everybody here at this time. That doesn't mean it's just their recommendation at this time. I think it's more fun to see us. Yeah, I, definitely. I think it is too. There's human other than me in my house. Exactly. <laughs> We've all missed each other. Yes, exactly. Uh, Anna, is your hand raised again? that I can see all of the people attending the meeting. Right now, my full screen only has nine people. Yeah, nine people on the screen. Who's controlling that? Uh, it, people just pop up. We've got names on the screen. Uh, right. I've, got, I've got 17 panelists. I can't tell you all about the workings of it. I can only tell you that 
Um, you see what I see. You can switch to gallery. You might see yeah. more. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see if I have that choice. Top right corner. Anyway, that's that's. Uh, no, I don't have that choice. Okay. Um, Motion on four. Okay. Okay. Voting. Carla Batista. Yes. James Brown. Yes. Ruth Doxy. Yes. Kristen Fujitaki. Kristen, unmute yourself, hon. Sorry. Yes. Linda Gravani. <laughs> yes. Sandy Joseph. Yes. Gary Kay. Yes. Danica Middleton is a yes. Alan Nelson. He'll still abstain. Carol Newman. Yes. Mary Penniman is absent. Jerry Pisanic. Yes. Linda Pruitt. Yes. Tom Riley. Yes. Linda Schwering is absent. Uh, Emma Scott. It's the funding. Can't oh, vote. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I can't vote. Uh, Jim Stein. Yes. Thirteen yeses, zero noes, two abstains, and two absent. Uh, I missed uh, who seconded. Riley. Tom Riley. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Okay, number 20. Sorry, this is taking longer, but we don't have to clean up, so that's good. Uh, discussion and possible action regarding uh, future uses of Zoom Pro for promoting Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council's missions. Really quickly, what I thought was, um, seeing that we are uh, housed like we are, that maybe we could do some um, EP training or uh, do some um, uh, health and public safety um, things for the community while we have this program available to us. So I just want us to think about it, not just to have it for the meetings, but this is a one way for us to engage the, the stakeholders. And that's what our task is, teaching them about the community, teaching them about uh, what city council is doing, letting them know how they can perhaps participate in the future. So now that we have this for a year, let's think about ways that we can use it. Um, number 21, I'm going to need the bylaws up, please, Jeremy. Um, number 21, discussion of possible action to update Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council bylaws, Article 3, Boundary, Section 1, Item Number 3, remove the word and. Uh, you're going to have to uh, come on down. Thank you. And go back up. That's it. Oh. Sandy. Okay, so that's uh, see page four of the bylaws. I have a motion. I move that Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council bylaws, Article Three, Section One, Item Number Three, be changed to read Victory Boulevard. Second. Second. Okay, Sandy uh, Joseph made the motion and seconded by was it Danica? Yes. Discussion. We don't know why and is in there. Um, I thought at first because it was there was no but. <laughs> <laughs> because the west is the last one. That's why it's just saying and the west boundary is White Oak Avenue to blah blah blah. That's all. Well, it's still. Well, it was like a dangling participle or something. So, so uh, we would like it removed. Um, at first, I thought it meant uh, Victory Boulevard and then Sepulveda Basin, but the paragraph below uh, says the area known as the Sepulveda Basin, Dam Basin shall be shared area. So that takes care of that. So we just want that removed. This is being recorded, Linda. Thank you. And the point being? That damn basin. <laughs> okay, it, it's fun to just chat, but we're we're running late, so if we okay. keep to uh, the program, I'd appreciate it. Okay, voting. Carla Batista. Is there any further discussion? Oh, sorry. Okay, let's vote. Carla Batista. Yes. James Brown. Yes. Ruth Doxy. No.
Uh, Kristen Fujitaki. Yes. Linda Gravani. Yes. Sandy Joseph. Yes. Gary Kay. Yes. Danica Middleton is a yes. Alan Nelson. Abstain. Carol Newman. Yes. Mary Penniman is absent. Jeremy Pisanic. Yes. Linda Pruitt. Yes. Tom Riley. Yes. Linda Schwering. Uh, she's not, she's no longer here. Um, Emma Scott. Uh, I think I'm ineligible. No, it's not. Oh, funding. It's not funding. You can vote. You can it's vote. Not yeah, it's not funding. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, this is the AM thing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Stein. Yes. Great. Jeremy, can we get the next one up, please? 13 yeses, one no, one abstain, uh, zero ineligibles, and two absent. Thank you. Uh, number 22, discussion and possible action to update Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council bylaws, Article 5, Section 1, Item G, second paragraph, which states, each appointment shall be for 12 months and any one person may only be appointed to a maximum of two 12 month uh, terms. Um, I move Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council bylaws article five, section one, item G be changed to a maximum of four 12 month terms. Second. Gravani made the motion and again, Danica? Sandy. Oh, Sandy, yeah. sorry, just give me your name so we know it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay, what actually this is about is that when we had um, uh, two year terms, this worked fine, but we went to four year terms. So if somebody is appointed, uh, then they, they, after two terms, have to leave the board. And, you know, it's hard enough to get people to, to, uh, come for the elections and when we appoint somebody and they're willing to stay I'm all for it any further discussion unless we don't like them well that's too bad <laughs> and they have to stay anyway should have thought that's about it. that when you voted in the first place okay let's take a vote please Carla Batista yes James Brown yes you can remove this Ruth Doxy. yes Kristen Fujitaki. Yes. Linda Gravani. Yes. Sandy Joseph. Yes. Gary Kay. Yes. Danica Middleton is a yes. Alan Nelson. Epstein. Carol Newman. Yes. Mary Penman is absent. Jeremy Pisanic. Yes. L are you sure? Linda Pruitt. Yes. Tom Riley. Yes. Linda Schwering is absent. Emma Scott? Yes. Emma? Sorry. Yes. Jim Stein? Yes. Fourteen yeses, zero noes, one abstain, zero ineligible, two absent. Thank you. Number 23, discussion and possible action regarding the status of One Generation's 12th Annual Senior Symposium, NPG of $500. Um, I wanted to find out if this money was going to be going back into our budget or not. Uh, so I was asking Linda Schwering if indeed um, she could give us an update on it. Uh, the NPG, the, the Neighborhood Purposes Grant check was cashed. Uh, and I just want the board to know that they do have the money. Uh, and I really don't know what's going to happen if they don't use it in this fiscal year. Can you speak? Yes. At this time, I was told by Jenna over there that they, over, they had, uh, over at uh, mm -hmm. One Generation, that they moved the uh, date to June 13th. Uh, Personally, I don't see how it's going to happen, but um, I, I've tried to stay in touch with her on email, and she said she's sticking to it, and unless I hear anything else in the month of May, then it's going to happen on June 13th. Okay. Glenn Daly? Uh, yes, I, I heard the same thing from them that Jim has heard. They've announced it. 
the change of date. However, if they end up canceling it or postponing it to next fiscal year, um, we've had to deal with this from a couple of other events that we put money into neighborhood councils. Uh, the funding program says it's the responsibility of the neighborhood council, not them, to request the money must be refunded and uh, put into our account. So you definitely want to stay on top of it and make sure it gets into your account so that you can then encumber it or roll it over for next year. Otherwise, you, you know, you, you will lose it. Okay. Thank you, Glenn. Steve? Ah, welcome. Mute you yourself, Steve. Steve, I'm trying to unmute you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, I was actually chiming in on the last thing with the oh. uh, the bylaws change. Uh, the first one with the word and, agreeing with um, Ruth, that mm -hmm. it's just the way the statement was formatted originally in a sentence form and then when it was put into the block uh, that way, the word and, it was just the last part as far as the fourth boundary. So okay. the dangling hand, it was fine the way it was, but it doesn't change anything to remove it. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I missed you. I was, uh, I didn't see your hand up. I apologize. We're going to have to do a better job. I need more eyes looking at that. If I could, please. Um, Okay, so there's really nothing to, to vote on other than we need to be aware that if it doesn't happen in June, that we need to throw the, uh, the money in the, the, the kitty again and then encumber it. Uh, number 24, discussion of possible action regarding the status of the chess tournament. Uh, that was $300 that was allocated uh, and it was supposed to be in April, I think it was. Um, Kristen, do you have an update on that? So I was told by Stephanie that they are no longer going to be having the tournament. They had tried to float the idea of having a virtual tournament, but they wouldn't need refreshments for that. Um, but they're not going to have one this year. Okay, so that again is money that we're gonna to have to throw back into the, the kitty. Uh, number 25, discussion of possible action regarding the status of the spring egg hunt at Balboa Sports Complex. There was $400 allocated for that. Uh, Danica, do you have an update? The spring egg hunt did not happen. Easter is over, won't happen. So they're not going to have anything between now and then that they would use the money for? Not an Easter egg hunt. It's not Easter, it's spring. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so that $400 will go back in the kitty? Yes. Thank you. Uh, 26, discussion of possible action regarding the status of the Valley Emergency Preparedness Fair on uh, Neighborhood Purposes Grant for Southern California Preparedness Foundation of $1,500. Linda Pruitt? Uh, as of right now, the fair is still on for October. And if I hear anything different, I will get back to you the minute I hear something. Okay, and we've got Steve Leffert. I'm trying to unmute you. Hi, uh, Steve. I don't know why you've got me in there again. <laughs> Your hand's still up. What do you got, Steve? Hi, Steve. <laughs> you didn't I, want to say anything more? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, I missed you once. I didn't want to miss you twice. Emma Scott's hand is up also, Linda. Hi. Uh, I'm letting you know that I'm going to leave now i am going to go to bed now because i have class tomorrow emma's leaving the meeting at 9 31. it's Me so too. exciting huh yeah we have a lot of people that have left it's just too exciting i know <laughs> thank you alan's, alan's hey, never emma. been here Great to see you thank you emma Good to see you guys. <laughs> bye 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 sweetie <laughs> sleep well <laughs> Okay, so we think this is going to happen, but, uh, and I believe you, ha it's the same thing. You have the money. So uh, if we have to throw it back in the kitty, we need to encumber it. Okay, I'll leave that in your hands, Linda. Okay. Number 27, discussion of possible action on how to assist Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council businesses get back into business. Jeremy? 
You know, I, I proposed this, and one of the things that I'm finding as I'm talking to people out there uh, is that, especially I mean, the essential businesses uh, at least can keep going and, and are moving, but business is really slow, and it's hurting all businesses all around, um, obviously, especially the non-essential businesses uh, that are in our neighborhood. Um, you know, I was just listening to a story of uh, a lady that has a salon that was arrested because she was still cutting hair uh, because she needed to feed her family. I mean, she had no other source of income um, and she was arrested for it. Uh, and fortunately, not our state, but, but it's the kind of things that are going on that people are redirecting. As uh, one of the earlier people had mentioned, um, that their, their whole task force, the, the uh, um, uh, city attorney uh, representative uh, had mentioned their, their whole, they have a whole task force right now enforcing non-essential businesses to make sure that they're shut down and forcibly doing so. Um, and yet we have all these people out there that are like in really hurting. How do we as a neighborhood council address the issues? How, how do we, how can we, is there anything that we can do that, that engages them, that helps them out, that supports them? Um, what would that look like? Um, I have some thoughts, but it might be more than what I can discuss within uh, our time and, and, and things are getting a little bit late. Um, it might have been suggested to create an ad hoc committee to specifically have a more deep discussion and, and brainstorm and come up with strategies that we can bring back to the council um, uh, or our neighborhood council and, and figure it out from there. But I'm, I'm not sure. So not sure. Well, we, we, we do have a business committee. Uh, and, uh, if you do get something going, I'd be happy to be part of it. The difficulty is, well, why is everybody shaking their head at me? You do not have a business. Have a business. What happened to it? Have uh, the problem, the problem is trying to do something without, the problem is trying to do something without, without, uh, clearly Packing. assisting one person over another. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Hey, hey. Well, what we could do is we could brainstorm and see if there's something that we can come up with. Maybe we can, um, well, we tried this a long time ago. It's very time consuming to get a, a list of all the, the uh, retail. <laughs> Carol, did you want to <laughs> volunteer for that again? We tried to I, I, I don't. It was unworkable. Right? I don't know. Glenn, are you still on? Let me. Um... I, I would say that. It... I'm going to ask Glenn a question. Uh, Glenn, uh, do you know how we can get a list of all the, the um, licenses for the businesses in the community? They keep telling me that we can get it from um, the financial, uh, city financial or- Office of Finance. Office of Finance, yeah. But you know, every time I try to contact them, they go, oh no, we, we can't give that out. You need to pay for it or whatever. So mm -hmm. do you perhaps know of a way for us to maybe get the uh, business licenses for all these people to make our task a little bit easier? Um, I, I I can make one suggestion. I don't know if it's going to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish, but I've heard from a different council office that they, they do have a list of businesses. So I don't know if that, again, you're looking for the actual licenses versus just the names and addresses of the business. If that's what you want, you might want to contact Nuri Martinez and just say, hey, can you give us all the businesses that are in Lake Balboa and see. Okay. You know. Well, that's a start. Thank you for that. One other thought, you know, that, that we could do is just be a little bit more broad of doing some kind of campaign, whether we use the, the benches or, or billboards or anything in our area to, you know, encourage people to support local business, uh, you know, something to that nature of, Hey, support your local small businesses uh, in the area, um, especially once quarantine is lifted and uh, and whatnot. I, I don't know what we would do be prior to the the quarantine, uh, but but once people can go back to work, you know, to be able to encourage a, a big push towards that. 
Um, so that, that's just a thought. Okay, well, we have a little bit of time and maybe, um, um, do we want to have like an ad hoc committee or do we just want to see what we can drum up and, and uh, we don't want another committee? <laughs> do we throw this under outreach? <laughs> Kristen? I, I think we should have a, a, a committee for this. This is important down the road because we have the people who live here and you have the businesses here and how to bring everything together. And, and it, it shows that Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council is aggressively trying to help the community, both the businesses and the residents as well. So were you volunteering for that ad hoc committee, Tom? How stupid do I look? <laughs> Congratulations, Tom. Tom, Tom. I agree. Tom, I agree. I'll volunteer. I'll volunteer for the yes. ad hoc committee. Uh, uh, Jeremy? I don't mind being in charge of another, as long as Jeremy is part of it. Um, Absolutely. But it, it, it's, it's something we should address. It's a short-term committee. It's not something we're going to have for the next 100 years. Okay. Anybody so, else want to volunteer? I don't want to exclude anyone that's dying to be on it. Yes, I'll, I'll I'll, I will volunteer. I'll help. Okay, so we've got, uh, we've got Jim Stein. But don't we have to be very careful about not favoring one business? Yeah, we're not another? going to favor. Yes, but no, you, that, that won't be a problem. you can have a committee without doing that. We're not telling <laughs> the government when we can get a haircut versus going to Home uh, Depot. We're just okay. with- Super. Um, just for like a, a quick department. comment. Who, who, Kristen, was that you? Sorry, yeah, yeah. that was me. Um, when all this was going on, I had emailed Betty and asked her, you know, that I had seen a lot of council people and other neighborhood councils that were pro promoting essentially um, restaurants that were open and delivering and pick up. And she said that we are allowed to do that. So I would assume that we would be able to do something similar um, okay. for other types of businesses as well. I did check with Betty. I just, I don't have the time to call businesses and ask them, right. but you know, Jeremy wants to do that. I'm all for it. Um, and Betty said it was okay. So if Jeremy, if you want to check with Betty too, she could probably give you some guidance as well. I think that's oh, a great thank idea. You. And Nuri, I'll help Jeremy. Nuri's oh, office you. has been trying to approach all the restaurants here in Lake Balboa because of the different programs that are out there that help them sell their food. I am burger has kids eat free on Monday. Huh? I am burger right here at Balboa and Satakoy kids eat free on Monday. Oh, well, I can dye my hair. It's not okay. A problem. We, we got to stay on to topic. Okay. okay? Uh, because <laughs> it's getting late. Um, yeah, sorry, Linda. There's a good suggestion on the questions. It says even devote a page on the LBNC website to resources for small business owners. There are so many free legal resources that are popping up and perhaps our small business owners would find them helpful. If, if we just prepared a list of where they could go would be great. Anyways, I think hmm. Jeremy's idea is great. We should sit down as a committee, whoever we are and- Okay, I'll send something out. Thank you very much. Uh, 28, discussion of possible action on how to help the community regarding COVID-19 issues, funding included. Um, I know that there's been a lot of neighborhood councils out there that have been spending money for food, et cetera. And um, I thought I would throw it out. We, um, we could use $5,000 of uh, money. Actually, I could have identified $5,000 to spend for a good cause during the, the COVID-19. Once we had a meeting, which is tonight, we can't do that anymore. So we have to vote on how we wanna use the funds. So again, uh, this would be something that we would have to have on the agenda. Uh, think about it for next time when I ask for agenda items. We've got a bucket of money that we need to spend. How can we spend it uh, and, and promote some of the businesses that perhaps will find Jeremy? Uh, that uh, need some assistance somehow or recognition of some sort. 
Um, but again, we don't want the money to go back to the city. Right. Correct. That's all I have about that. Uh, number 29, we're getting there. Um, this is a funding item uh, and uh, Tom Riley is on the board of this um, San Fernando Valley Inter uh, Community mm -hmm. Council. So you have to recuse yourself. So there's a button on the right side that says okay, end Tom, and leave. So you need to leave the meeting, please. Right, Tom. And, uh, Danica, yeah. Danica, Danica, will you please show at 942 that uh, Tom Riley has left the meeting? Yes. Tell this. All right. Well, before I leave, I want to. No, put you can't. Up. Before you leave, you have to. You have to go. Can I ask him a question? Sure. They changed the name. It used to be the Valley Interface. Yes. We'll Council. talk about that in a minute. Tom, you have to be off. Okay. Um, okay. Hi, um, Bye. Sandy, that meeting was a breeze for you. As I look at the tree behind you. <laughs> um, please hang up so we can go on. Leave Love you, Tom. Me. All right. I'll double check that he's gone. I'll run over and see. Yeah, he's, he's gone. He's gone. Okay. So funding, discussion of possible action regarding $4,000 neighborhood purposes grant for San Fernando Valley Inner Community Council, VIC. Tom Riley recused himself. Um, and I'm just gonna give you some background. Uh, Ruth, you, you mentioned the name. They were originally San Fernando Valley Inter hey. Faith, uh, but it costs too much money to change the name. So they have officially gone by the San Fernando Valley Inner Community Council because everyone was thinking was interfaith and it had to do with religion and it never did. Hmm. So uh, the background is the San Fernando Valley Inner Community Council has been helping the San Fernando Valley senior citizens for the past 56 years. We are the lar they are the largest support organization in the Valley for senior citizens with, a, uh, with four senior activity and resource centers and 19 food centers that are serving over 10,000 people a day. Because of the virus, all the centers have been closed and the meals that were served at the centers are now being delivered to the San Fernando Valley homes of the members since they stay at home, since the stay at home program was put into effect. BIC has delivered over 30,000 meals to the homes of senior citizens. The two biggest concerns with people over 60 is isolation and loneliness. With the loss of the centers to the virus, BIC is able to provide not only nourishment the company as well with the daily visitors to the homes. In a lot of cases, VIC is the only human interaction these seniors have all day. Because of the great cost to provide food and companionship, VIC needs money to con continue to be able to help the senior citizens of the Valley. Not all the 10,000 people live in Lake Balboa, but many do uh, live and, and depend on VIC for their needs. So I move that Lake Balboa Neighborhood Council authorize the expenditure for a neighborhood purposes grant in the amount of $4,000 to San Fernando Valley Inner Community Council for the Meals on Wheels program. Second. Ravani <laughs> made the motion and Sandy. Ruth seconded. Oh. Discussion. I think it's a great idea. I agree. I think this is phenomenal. It's a great way and we may want to decide to pay, give them more money a little later. Maybe this is what, what our cause would be. Mm -hmm. But uh, it is a good cause and I, I agree. I don't see any questions. Do we have any questions and answers here? I, oh. I, I just make one comment if I may. Sure. Uh, we, being that it's not on the agenda to move funds around, we will no, have to no, have- No, you can't talk about that now. We're talking oh, about all all right. the money. Okay, I will shut up again. Thank you. We have to finish the topic. It rules or rules or rules or rules. Any further discussion? No, great. Okay, let's take a vote, Danica. Carla Batista. Yes. James Brown. Yes. Ruth Doxey. Yes. Kristen Fujitaki. Yes. Linda Gravani. Yes. Andy Joseph. Yes. Gary Kay. Yes. 
Danica Middleton is a yes. Alan Nelson, abstaining. Carol Newman. Yes. Mary Penniman is not here. Jeremy Pisanic. Yes. Linda Pruitt. Yes. Tom Riley is not here. Linda Schwering is not here. Emma Scott is not here. Jim Stein. Yes. 12 yeses, zero noes, one abstain, zero ineligible, and four not hears. We have a recusal. Oh, sorry, yes. Uh, three absent, one recusal, sorry. Okay, so it's 12, zero, one, one. 12, zero, one, zero. One and then two absents. Absent really doesn't count. Okay, so we've got one. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Motion carries. Number 30. Uh, thank you, Lake Balboa board members, for all you do for our community. I really, really appreciate all your help and, and all the support that we have. And I really appreciate everybody that stayed, all 15 attendees that are still there and the 14 <laughs> panelists that Yay. are here. I really appreciate your participation and I know it was rough around the edges, but it was quite interesting. So um, thank you and meeting adjourned. Good night. Good night. Good night. Peace. <laughs> Linda, I sent you an email. Bye. Who said that? Me. Oh, okay. Something. I sent you an email. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Lydia. Bye. Good Linda, meeting. Thank you. Linda Gravani, I need to get with you to learn how to do this. So sometime, because I want to do an EP meeting this way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.